Hi everyone. I decided on the, going on the back of the last video, I'm going to use the last two um, decoupage, decoupage, hello, images um, from the December 2021 Simon Says Stamp card kit. Um, I'm going to actually make little tree decorations with them. So I've used a unbranded, <laughs> it's just squares, stitch squares that I had in my stash um, and happened to be the right sort of size for the main decoupage image. So I cut a couple of those out and I'm using some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Ink around the edge of this first panel. And I decided that image had more red on it. So the the pink, although lovely, <laughs> is not quite right. So I grabbed some Barn Door Distress Ink as well. And I will just go over the top with that. And I'm using my Blender Tools, no? Foam Applicator Tools, is that what they're called? I haven't used these for a long time. I just thought, why not? <laughs> I have all the little things for them, so why not? So, um, and it was nice to sort of grab an old tool that I've had for a long time and use it and reuse it, which is why we buy these things, right? <laughs> so, um, anyway, the red, I thought, just added a lot more to and, and worked better with the image. Um, I think it probably still was a little bit brighter than I wanted it, but I think it turns out all right and it works okay. So it just, I don't know, just works better. And then the slight pink haze going in from that just seemed to work nicely as well. So for the second one, I do feel like it has more of a lighter um, image and more pink. So I just went with the Kitsch Flamingo for the second image, which you haven't seen yet. And these are really easy to do. These are just, if you watched the previous video, um, thank you. And um, <laughs> it shows how another way that you can use those um, 3D decoupage images. So I just feel like that made more sense <laughs> to have that one as a pink one. So just look right to me. I even tried it with the other red one and I didn't like it. So <laughs> I just stuck with the pink. <laughs> But also then it's two different colour images and two different images and two different decorations that you'll have for your tree, which I think makes more sense to me anyway. So a little bit of clean up. And then I'm going to stick these. Um, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to stick it flat to this piece, the square, or whether I wanted to actually put that up on some foam tape as well. And I decided to stick it flat, but this one in particular, I edged with the, the barn door distressing just to highlight that edge a little bit and just helps it stand away from the background piece a little bit more. Um, the other one seemed to work just fine without any ink edge, you know, inking the edges and that, but this one for some reason, <laughs> it didn't want, it didn't look quite right. So. I fixed it. So just lining it up somewhat straight <laughs> and somewhat centered um, onto this little square panel. Now that in itself could make a nice little card front and you could bling it up and add all your 3D decoupage and you could use these as little note cards or um, Christmas thank you cards or something like that. Um, I am as the video suggests I'm using them to make little Christmas tree decorations so so for the little tabs these are from Tim Hull's alterations tiny tabs I think it's called um, I'll have all the supplies below and I again it's a it's a die a steel rule die that I have had for years and I forget not I don't forget I've got it but I forget to use it <laughs> and it has all these wonderful little tabs on them and I thought it made a great like what do you call it like the topper of a tag so if you don't have tags you could use these um, and add it to the top of a square piece of cardstock or a rectangle or whatever it is and that way you're creating your own little tag <laughs> so it so just came to me one day like it does um, and actually the inspiration for the tags 
part of this, although mine are going to be decorations, um, came from Nicole Spohr, where she'd used these 3D um, images and made actual tags for, you know, her friends and family or whoever she's given them to. Um, and it, I thought, I don't, you know, sometimes we don't have the same supplies as someone else and that's okay. But go through your stash and see what you've got that you could use if you're inspired by someone else and you want to create something similar. So for me, I'm using these as decorations as opposed to tags, but these could be tags as well. So, you know, go with what you, you know, what feels right for you. So I'm taking out the different layers for each of these and just popping them like in order, if that makes sense. So you'll have the main image, which is stuck to our little decoration, which is the whole image. And then as each layer is put on, it will, each layer will then get smaller. So it then creates this three dimensional coming out of the page image. Um, so once you get the hang of this, it's actually really easy. Um, they pop out really easy. They've got little, what did I call them in the last video? Little pips. <laughs> I think that's what they used to call them in the old days. Um, so it makes it really easy. And I, when I first saw this kit, I was thinking, oh no, I'm going to have to cut all these images out. Um, but you don't. It's It makes it really, really easy when that's already done for you. <laughs> so I'm really grateful for that because my hands are not very good with things like that. So um, yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and then you just add these little foam plates. These foam pads came in the kit as well. And I have to say, I did all five of the decoupage, all the 3D on all of them, um, and used all of the layers and just used them as they were meant. Um, obviously, you can do other things. You can break them down into sort of using parts and pieces kind of thing. But I used all of them as they were intended, and I had more than enough foam pads. And I was liberal. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't fussy. I, I put loads of foam pads. I, like, I'm not ashamed of <laughs> using a lot of foam pads on my images. You guys would have known that by now. Those of you who've been here a while, um, I use a million of them. Um, so I am not, you know, <laughs> there were loads of them. Um, and more than enough for this whole kit um, to do all five of these images. So... We're getting the next layer on, which is slightly smaller than the previous one. And it's one of those things that these are these foam pads are quite thin. So maybe they're like one mil thick, whereas a standard foam pad, I think, is about two mil. So depending how thick your foam pad is, depends on how much that image is going to jump out the page, so to speak. So um, I like this because it's, it's, the, it's there as a three dimensional thing but it's not so chunky that you would have to pay extra for postage and stuff like that if you were making them into cards or note cards or whatever so and i like these little thinner foam pads they're nice they're easy to work with and they seem like they're quite strong adhesive as well so and they were the Doris Doris is that how you say it Doris foam pads so really nice a few of them i had to cut in half um i don't feel like i i don't remember having to cut them into quarters but you could if you needed to i um didn't feel like i needed to do that so half was as small as i cut them um and i had like i say more than enough for all of it so getting the third layer on i think this is the third one <laughs> they were i think only one image had six layers um but all of them had at least five, I believe. So not, not too, too bad. And there's that three dimension. And if you wait till the end, you'll see them in slow-mo. Well, not slow-mo, but like real life. <laughs> real life. Um, and then I have this um, hole puncher. It's like a, an industrial version of it. <laughs> um, and I just found a hole that I thought worked really well with it um, size-wise. And that's also why I didn't add adhesive to the center because I knew I was going to be punching it out and I didn't want the gumminess of the glue to get onto my punch. So that's why when we were gluing the little, um, those little 
uh, tag holder bits at the top. I don't know what you call them, tabs. Um, I didn't want the glue in the, like the whole center. I just went around the outside of that circular bit, which you'll see again in a minute. So for the second one, I'm going to, again, put some uh, Kitsch Flamingo. I'm going to use the pink on this one. And I'm going to add just the ink around the edges like I did on the, the other one. Very simple. And then it all like, it's all cohesive and it works together and it looks real cool. You could easily have left them white. If you're not an inky kind of person um, and you just like, um, you know, just like this really simple, you could simplify it even more and you could just have the white base or a different color. Maybe you've got some pink or some green cardstock that would work. Um, just die cut them in those colors and then you don't need to worry about inking. So just round the edges of that, um, the circular part. So again, there's no gumminess in the middle. <laughs> um, and also if these weren't completely dry dry, then I wasn't going to land up with glue coming out <laughs> of, the, of the center bit. It just made sense to me. But, and then I block on the, on the, uh, on top of that just to, while it dries so that it's lays as flat as possible. So to save a bit of time on this one, because it is repetitive with the la same as the last one, I've already taken all the pieces out and put the foam on the back um, and taken all the back of them off. <laughs> um, so at the moment, just punching the hole, I thought I'd do this first this time and adding another piece of twine like I did on the last one, um, just to get a little hanger. And I thought the twine worked really well, but you could use some thin ribbon that would look lovely twine or string that kind of thing I think it looks nice and then this one goes together even simpler because I've already prepped all of it so you don't have to sit and watch me take foam pads or 10,000 foam pads off and just layering up in order of the size of the images very easy for some reason this little bird took me forever to get on there. I don't know why I couldn't line this thing up And I do get him on there, this sweet little bird. And then a little snowball. So you could leave these as they are and they look really cute and I think they're kind of fun. But I'm going to take some um, Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard. And this is lit this is just a, I say just, it's obviously a Nouveau product. <laughs> But there's um, there's quite a few things out there where it's a clear glitter. So when it when the glue in it dries, it's clear, and then you're just left with this sort of shimmery, sparkly, almost like a white iridescent kind of thing. But it's not white; it's more clear, if that makes sense. So I have a Nouveau one, but I love the Stickles ones. I used to have loads of those when when I was younger, <laughs> what um, a few years ago, um, and I may even get some more of those as well but the white blizzard for Nouveau is perfect for this um or any of the clear glitter glue gels that you may have already and like I say stickles is another really good one to do and they have a, quite a few varieties of the size of the chunk of glitter that's in them so depending on how fine you want it and whether you want a white glitter or a gold glitter they have two two colors in there so i'm just going over very sparingly um, over anywhere where I think there's a bit of snow or, you know, like the baubles, like the, of the, um, hats and things like that. But also it reminded me of, um, and especially when it dries, it reminds me of those sort of cards that you, like Christmas cards you do get where they've added some of this sort of glitter and glittery glue onto it. And it gives you that sort of effect. Um, that's kind of what it reminded me of. So I thought it was quite a cool thing to do. You could, if you don't have glitter glues and you have some loose glitter and you've got an iridescent or a white one, you could add some glue that will dry clear or like a quickie glue pen, add that on and then chuck some glitter on it. I prefer this because it's a little less messy. <laughs> um, I like glitter, but I don't like it on my work surface afterwards and for months after that, you feel like you're never getting it off the surface. <laughs> so, um, but either way will work. It's just some sparkle. 
so this is them um obviously when the glitter dries or the glue dries you will see more sparkle at the moment it's kind of it's quite wet so it looks quite glossy but there is the shimmering shimmery glitteriness in there um and then this is the second one so i hope you've enjoyed this guys i hope this gives you another idea of what to do with these um 3d decoupage kits from uh, sorry pages from the simon says stamp december 2021 card kit and i will see you in the next one guys bye